Hey guys, this is Allie with iMore and Pixel Fix, and today we're going to look at how to replace a screen on an iPhone 4. This tutorial is for the GSM model. The CDMA model is different, and we'll look at that at a different date. Uh, basically, you'll want to do this if your touchscreen has stopped responding, your LCD is not working or washed out, or if you have a cracked screen. Okay, so the first thing we're going to want to do is take out the SIM card, but first we'll point out what tools you're going to need for this. Uh, you're going to need a SIM removal tool or paper clip, either one will work. Uh, you're going to need a flathead screwdriver, I've just got a multi-tool here, uh, probably about that size. You need these for the logic board screws. Uh, they're kind of little unicorn screws, they actually have uh, cross heads on them, but a flathead will work to take them out. In the GSM model you only have one to worry about. Uh, double zero Phillips screwdriver. Uh, you'll need a security screwdriver if your phone is one of the newer ones with the five-point screws as opposed to standard Phillips screws. And a pry tool or spudger. Uh, I prefer these, but a plastic pry tool will work just as well. So first what we're going to do is we're going to remove the SIM card. And next we are going to remove the dot connector screws in the bottom. Uh, on this phone, they're standard Phillips, so I'm going to use my double zero. And of course you're going to want to power off your device before you perform any repair. And before we really get into a lot of screws, uh, you're going to want to find a way to organize screws that you're going to remember where they come in and go out from, considering uh, there's quite a few screws and they do have different head sizes, uh, different thread sizes, so it can uh, waste a lot of time if you don't remember where the screws go. Next, you're just going to want to pop off your back, uh, just slide it up, and it should pop right off. So next, what we're going to want to do is remove the battery, use your double zero Phillips screwdriver, and there's one screw holding it right here on the GSM model. So I'm going to remove that screw. And set it aside. Next, we're going to use our pry tool to pry off the clip holding down the battery, which is right here. And just gently take the end of your pry tool and lift off. And you have a little grounding clip underneath the battery clip right here uh, that you'll need to set aside for reassembly later. Uh, the easiest way I've found to pull these batteries out, don't use the pull tab. They either tear or you can bend the battery, which you don't want to do. There's no components along this side of the phone that you can really damage, so what I do is I stick a pry tool under here and gently pry up, and that seems to be a much better way to pull the battery out. So I'll set that aside, and here's the little grounding clip I was talking about. So you're going to want to set that aside with the battery. Next what we're going to do is we are going to uh, remove the shield that covers the cable for the dock connector. Uh, as a tip, I typically fold this over onto the adhesive so it stays out of the way. You don't have to, but I've just found that to be an easy way to do that. Uh, so we're going to remove these two screws right here. They are different sizes, so pay attention that you're keeping them in the correct order. And once you've got these two screws out, you're going to notice that the shield just comes right up. So there's the shield piece. We're going to set that aside with those two screws. Now we can pop up this cable right here. The easiest way to do this is with your pry tool and just pop it up from the side. Um, how you're going to want to remove this is you want to be careful because there is adhesive holding it down. This phone's been taken apart before. Your phone, if it's never been taken apart, you're going to have a bit more adhesive to pull up right here. So just be careful that you don't tear the cable while doing that. Next, what we're going to do is you've got uh, your antenna right here. And all you're going to do to release that is pry it up very gently and move it to the side. 
and this piece right here is your uh, speaker assembly and that's what we're going to get to but first we need to remove the logic board so you've got a couple <coughs> screws holding your logic board down um, up here you have a shield with one two three four five screws and we're going to pause to remove these five screws just make sure that you're setting them in the order that they go in okay now to get to the cables under the logic board the five screws that you just removed one two three four five they're holding down this shield uh, if you can see right here there's actually a little clip that's holding it in place. The easiest way to remove this is to just stick your pry tool underneath that clip and this shield will come loose. So this is the shield you're removing. I'm going to set that aside and now we've got down to the components and the cables on the logic board. So we're going to need to unclip uh, six clips here. First is your camera. You can unclip that one. Next is your LCD and digitizer, two, three, and then you've got three clips right here that come up the opposite way. So you're going to, and these are sensors and whatnot. So up this way, two, three. So now that we've got those three out, you can remove your camera by gently lifting upwards and it'll come right out. So you can set that aside. Now we've got a couple more screws holding down the logic board. Uh, pretty much three more. You've got one right here in this corner underneath the dot connector cable. Uh, you've got one right here which is underneath the water sensor you'll need to remove. The easiest way I found to remove this is to either just use the tip of a small screwdriver uh, or a pry tool sometimes will work if you've got a pointed one. And then you've got one more screw up here holding it in and that's the flathead screw that I was talking about. So we'll start with these two down here and these are just double zero so your double zero should work. Just gonna move one, two, And then for the one up here, I'm going to switch to my flathead screwdriver and three. So uh, just as a note, these two screws are the same size as is the one over here in your dot connector corner. So uh, those three you can group together if that's easier for you, however you want to sort them. Uh, next what we're going to do is actually remove the logic board. Um, the first thing you want to do is make sure your cables are out of the way. Just bend them back gently a little bit. The easiest way to do this is to grab it from the bottom and gently lift upwards. I normally use the camera hole to uh, position my finger in the top. And the logic board should come out pretty easily. So. As a side note, there's a little rubber piece that sits right up here on the logic board. It's loose. Uh, if this is not there when you reassemble it, your Wi-Fi or your, well, probably just your Wi-Fi uh, may not work. It's a gr it, it grounds it, so you're going to want to make sure you don't lose that little rubber piece. So then we set the logic board aside. And now we've gotten to our speaker assembly. Uh, we only have one more screw holding it down. So we're going to remove that. Okay, so now we've gotten to the speaker assembly. And to pop that out, all you do is pretty much lift it out of the phone. Okay, next what we're going to want to do for either a home button assembly or a screen assembly uh, is we need to remove four screws in the corner. Uh, as you'll see up here, the vibrator assembly is still here, so I'll need to remove that. There is a screw behind it that we'll need to take out. And again, these two screws are different sizes, so you want to make sure you don't mix them up. And 
that'll just pop right out. Okay, now we've got four screws in each corner that we're gonna need to completely remove. Okay, so we removed the four screws that are in each corner. There's one underneath the vibrator assembly. There's one right here in this corner. And then two down by the dot connector. Uh, one of them is right here. And the other one is right there. Uh, so once we remove those, now we have six screws with washers that hold the frame of the phone in. All ten of these screws are responsible for basically holding the screen and the LCD on your phone. Uh, the other six that are in the middle, you don't need to completely take out. You can if you want, but the washers are a huge pain to get back in if you take them out. So I recommend just loosening these because that's going to be enough to get the screen off. So you've got one, two, three, four, five, six. And usually two to three turns is enough to loosen these, and I'll show you how I do this is I loosen them and then I look to see if they've got some give to them. If they've gotten give, they're out far enough. So just loosen all three of these. Enough to where you can feel the washer give a, give a little bit. And we'll go on the other side and loosen these three. All right, and now we have gotten to the point where we're ready to remove the screen. Okay, to remove the screen of the phone, you're going to want to be extremely careful doing this process. Uh, you can use a pry tool. It's going to be a little bit harder to get around the edges. I use a razor blade. Uh, don't use a razor blade unless you feel comfortable doing this. The areas you need to be careful of are around the home button. Uh, there's really no components up here that you can get to, uh, but I would still be careful going around uh, the top part here. So what I typically do is I insert either the tip of a razor blade or a pry tool right in the corner. Uh, and as a side note, this phone has been taken apart before, so it's going to come apart a lot easier than one that has never been taken apart because there is adhesive that you need to break both up here and down here on both sides of the home button. So you'll need to be gentle breaking that. Uh, what I do is run a pry tool or a razor blade along the inside edge until it's loose. You can straighten these cables a little bit, makes it easier for them to come out. And then go down here on the underside and do the same thing. And once the adhesive's broken, it should just slide right out. And at the top there is quite a bit of adhesive, so, and you can see I've applied more adhesive to this one so it is sticking. Once it's out, this frame will separate and just back these ribbon cables out carefully. <clears throat> and this is how you remove the old screen or your screen from the midsection of your phone. Okay, if you're performing a screen replacement, the first thing you're going to want to do after you get the old assembly off is you're going to want to make sure that you have absolutely no glass sticking to the adhesive down here, running along the sides of the tracks, or up here. Uh, if you have any glass stuck in here, your new assembly, you can potentially crack it, damage the LCD, or it's not going to sit right. So make sure that you do a very thorough job uh, cleaning up here and down here uh, to rid of all the glass. Uh, after you've done that, um, normally this adhesive by the home button and up at the top, it's salvageable, you won't pull all of it off, and uh, I guess my theory is kind of you have 10 screws holding the screen in. You can apply more adhesive if you want, but I don't really find it necessary. Uh, you're going to need two things off of your old assembly. Um, one, and depending on who you order a part from, it might come with the little piece that, uh, guards the front-facing camera, it might not, it might come with speaker mesh, it might not. 
If not, you're going to need to take it off your old assembly. Uh, the easiest way I found to make sure they're lined up correctly is this little ring. Once you pull it off your old assembly, uh, just stick it right on your front facing camera. And it should, there's little grooves, you can feel how it's supposed to sit in here. So what I do is line it up in here. And it should sit flush with the front facing camera when you have it in there correct. Speaker mesh, I use a tiny piece of adhesive and uh, stick it right on the chassis in here. So then you know that it's lined up correctly. Uh, you can alternatively stick it on the back here. Uh, I just find that this is an easier way to line it up since there's already a cutout for you. And once you've done that, you're ready to put your screen in.